Dr. Amar, you can do the introduction. No, it's eight o'clock. It is still seven fifty-four. So we can have the introduction till we uh, have other panelists to join. So uh, Dr. Jafar is uh, from the state of Karnataka, and uh, he is Dr. Jafar. Better you, you. I, I don't even call you Dr. Jafar. I call you Jafar. <laughs> sorry, la. Sorry, sorry, boss. <laughs> You know, he is in such a high position. I barge into his office. I said, where are you? And everybody will be looking, who is she? So he, he, is, he was a commissioner of education for the whole state uh, in, uh, in, in India, for the whole of Karnataka state. So we have been discussing immensely about the third way, whether it will affect the children and others. So that's why we have him there as a panelist. And then uh, we have Dr. Rajesh there, and I'm calling the others. Because we said the panel discussion at eight, now it is 7.55, we have five minutes, so we can introduce each others and we can have an informal discussion. Dr. Idris, can, uh, can you please call Dr. Shahzad? Yes, yes, Jafar, it's better you introduce yourself. We have Dr. Ahmed there. I asked him to share his experience regarding handling of COVID cases with children. Dr. Ahmed, Dr. Jafar, and uh, Doc, uh, Mr. Ashraful Hassan, they both are on the ground. And you see the situation in India is going out of the hands. Unfortunately, I don't want to say anything. I'm, I'm just trying to control myself. So everybody has a question. The third way, will it be for children how to handle? That's why I squeezed my presentation. Dr. Guru was a bit unhappy that I deleted my presentation and I put the panel discussion in the conference. Aisha, Mafirat, Guru, all the others were unhappy that I removed my presentation. But this panel discussion was very, very important for us. Um, the 30 minute discussion, like how Dr. Dilek knows in Germany, how safely. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Dilek, uh, because the children uh, in Germany, so we have Dr. Dilek from Germany, then we have Dr. Ahmed from um, uh, Turkey, we have all the many other Turkish doctors, then we have Dr. Raji, Dr. Bhumesh from India, Dr. Sunil from India, and Dr. of course, you are a policymaker, that's why I'm pulling you here. I'm also asking Ashwin to join. Dr. Sunil, could you reach Ashwin there? <laughs> Actually, I sent him the, this day, I called him, he did not pick up the phone, I sent him the message. Uh, he'll join in. Uh, he'll join in. Very in a few minutes. Yes. Dr. So, Vijay so, is going to join. Dr. Vijay is one of the doctors. Who is? Uh, <laughs> policy maker. He is. He is one of the advisors for uh, policy making with the Indian government. And then we have Dr. Tari, who is an Indian but residing in Malaysia, but his heart beats for India. So I have dragged him also here. And uh, Dr. Sunil, uh, Dr. Vijay? Okay. Five minutes. He's joining in five minutes. Okay. So eight o'clock means eight o'clock. Dilik, we both are Germans. We are always there before time. <laughs> <laughs> Dilik is uh, from Turkish. So Aisha, you can speak to her in Turkish. Uh, she can speak uh, Turkish better than English and Deutsch. Mm -hmm. So uh, she has been... Um, immense uh, support and she has worked, I mean, she has worked extensively. One of, I think we, we should be very proud to say uh, she is one of the leading, what can I say? She's a, one of the leading expert and always she's worried about people, always worried about research. All, I mean, I don't know how to give an extensive, um, what, what can I say? I can read her CV, I can read her thing. But apart from that, most of the experts, yes, they have a huge long CV, but they they also need to have a heart and the soul for the system or to help the, people, to help the person who is right there. And I know Jafar, Jafar was the first one who said, okay, come, let us have this panel discussion. Let us have it uh, immediately. So Jafar, yes, we have, we have time till the another five minutes. I'm stealing your time from your office. I know it's really, Ashwin is joining. So Jafar, uh, Jafar is seeing me after how many years? I think four years. Four years. Four years. Yeah, he's seeing me after four years. So many people ask me, where did I vanish? So now when they see me, they ask, what did you do? Did you go and get transformation? <laughs> yeah, Jafar. 
So we have uh, Dr. Salahuddin also from the ground level there. And of course, Jabbar, how can I forget my brother? I mean, I have asked him also to join. Yeah. Yes, Jafar, do you have anything? Uh, good morning, everybody. I'll just give a quick introduction. I, um, in India, we have a system of uh, uh, selecting an Indian administrative service where uh, the officers selected at uh, uh, service are posted at the central as well as at the state level governments uh, on policy and execution level. So I have worked uh, in uh, rural development department for four years, uh, education department for four years, and was in the district level, that is the local level governance uh, for about five years. And currently for the last two years, I'm handling the finance department of the state. Coming to the COVID situation, um, Bangalore is, has been seeing it's a very deadly second wave, but hopefully in Bangalore, which is the capital city, we have seen the peak and the cases are going down. We have seen up to 25,000 cases a day, but uh, currently we are stabilizing around 10 to 11,000 cases a day. But the danger, Bangalore being the biggest, we could handle to some extent, but the cause of worry in Karnataka as well as in India is that the infection is moving towards countryside in the villages where uh, systems will not be as robust as it is there in the uh, cities. So that's an issue. And uh, unlike the previous months, so now we have been testing uh, quite uh, high. Of course, now there are uh, certain allegations that the numbers are testing numbers are coming down. Still positivity, test positivity rate is a concern. It is uh, around 20, 25% uh, in uh, Karnataka. In Bangalore, test positivity rate, Bangalore results is coming down. So what they did is in government, when things were going out of hands in the first wave in July 2020, uh, Bangalore government did divided the Bangalore uh, city into eight zones. This city is divided into eight zones. And one senior minister and one senior officer was uh, given charge of each of the zone. So for the last more than a year, I have been looking after one of the small one small zone in Bangalore. So have been uh, part of the team there. Basically, we used to do test, trace, and uh, handle the clinical part. But the stark difference with first wave and second wave, between first wave and second wave, what we are seeing is because of the sheer number of cases that has gone up to five times than the first wave, all senior officers are also now more involved in the clinical management, hunting for beds, looking at ICU beds, ventilators, and this kind of involvement in clinical management by the policy makers have definitely taken its toll on the public health issues like tracing, contact tracing and containment watch. So that's quickly, I thought I'll uh, brief about the situation, uh, what we are facing today. But at the same time, we have been uh, uh, doing a lot of tests now, government is insisting that the maximum number of tests should be on RT-PCR. But uh, now, for the last few days, we are uh, looking at antigen test also. Since a lot of symptomatic patients are there, we are using antigen test, which will give quick result. And we have been pushing our labs to give the results in 24 hours so that uh, the result is out fast, detection is fast, and the containment can be done fast. And finally, a large number of patients we are uh, putting on home isolation. Because uh, though there are cases where we see things are going out of control, we're putting on home isolation. And one last word is last two weeks, we are seeing very young population getting very serious and getting onto the ICU and ventilator. We're seeing people in 20s and 30s, uh, their condition deteriorating and they're going into ventilators. This development we are seeing for the last two weeks. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Jafar. Uh, Amin also has joined. Amin, can you unmute? Ashwin also has joined. Ashwin, can you unmute? Yes, yes, Dr. Atal. Yeah, Ashwin is also here. Ashwin, a quick brief introduction. Dr. Rahmat is also there. So uh, we're just having a little bit of brief introduction before we start the panel discussion. So this is Ashwin. Ashwin, it's better you introduce yourself because Not I'm very bad in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, hello everyone. So, I am basically the CEO of a company called Safety Analytics, which is uh, a government advisory firm. 
we work with the government of india and various state governments in india including government of telangana government of up uh, primarily uh, you know working towards uh, using technology to help them take the right decisions make the right policies so of course with the, with the whole covid situation we have been very actively involved on a number of committees uh, trying to solve the situation in india uh, in the in the last year during the first wave we were majorly focused on uh, uh, on the decision support systems uh, for example the entire uh, concept of uh, granular lockdown and containment zones uh, to a great extent was created by us and then adopted by the government of india as well uh, this uh, uh, second wave uh, came across as a much bigger challenge Uh, beyond all of that what we had faced in the last year uh, because the major challenges were from the angle of availability of resources so uh, then government uh, with the support of government of india we created this uh, initiative called sutra which is basically trying to you know connect citizens to each other to solve the problem of availability of resources but as as we all know the problem still persists to a great extent uh, uh, we have also been seeing lots of data because we also have this protocol bot for doctors so you know uh, uh, the guidelines which are created by icmr and uh, and then created by various healthcare institutions that are associated with us based on that we have created this protocol bot which a doctor can go through and know what they should be taking as an action depending on various cases which are available to them and uh, data which comes from that shows uh, you know uh, as uh, dr jaffa also so uh, also told Uh, is uh, that a large population is uh, is is the very young population now in the last two weeks especially we have seen more than 70% of the cases which are being which are coming to these doctors who are associated with our protocol bot are uh, less than the age of 40 and a number of them are also minors so yeah so that that is clearly a much more alarming situation than what was the case uh, one year ago and we need to you know kind of work towards that we're, we're seeing we'll, we'll need to come together to figure out what can be done Thanks, Ashwin. I mean, you are there, so uh, I was given. I mean, to join Dr. Yasser, so I tried to request the uh, experts. Like uh, Dr. Ahmed is heading in the hospitals in Istanbul, the Turkish experience tougher. That would uh, be a very good experience and take home message because Alhamdulillah, they have excellently managed in Turkey. Of course, children are children, and also in Germany, Dr. Dilik is here from Germany and. I've requested uh, Professor Naimi to join from Iran, and Dr. Tahir is from Malaysia. Also, Vincent so will join us. Dr. Shahzad is with us from Pakistan. He just joined us. Uh, he is going to join us. Uh, he's again. with us. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's with us. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Shahzad, you with us? Yeah, Dr. Shahzad is from Pakistan. So it is like. Uh, Uh, this is an amazing panel discussion right now with the heated thing dr gur is from israel dr shahbaz is from pakistan dr naimi is from iran uh, we have indians we have turkish we have germans we have belgium i don't know i miss the americans <laughs> they are sleeping i mean i mean if you want i can start my uh, presentation yes. uh, okay uh, good morning for yes, Good morning for everybody. Uh, this is the fifth our uh, conference series. Uh, as a health science university, we are very happy to support this nice meetings series. Uh, this now I will mention about the. Uh, I will mention about the third. Uh, waves in covid-19 in what about the, in children in turkey uh, maybe uh, you knows but i am in the also chief uh, doctor of the very big research and training hospital in istanbul we have a 600 beds and then uh, 120 children beds and then intensive care unit newborn and children uh, intensive care units and this this third wave of covid-19 virus infection uh, which uh, started in the march of this year in turkey uh, nearly one years before uh, it starts but after one year uh, the third wave is start in march and has affected the pediatric patients more than the first and second wave during this time the number of patients that we followed as a inpatient in our clinic has increased really is uh, very increased numbers these patients mostly came 
to our uh, hospital high fe uh, fever as well as clinical and pneumonia. Uh, and then uh, their CT scans most showed uh, typically ground glass opacity uh, and uh, had longer recovery periods. So those with pneumonia clinic, we treated the non-specific uh, antibiotics and also favipiravir was added to the treatment regime of this with severe symptoms and were between 16 and 17 years old. This is uh, very important. This branch is 16 and 17 years old. Patients with other underlying chronic illness were followed in the pediatric intensive care unit. We had zero mortality. Uh, thanks to God, uh, Allah shukur. And then this British uh, mutation was found in our hospital only two uh, patients, one of whom uh, had a chronic illness, therefore was followed in the pediatric intensive care unit. The other patient was a 16 years old with mild respiratory difficulties with pneumonia clinic with less than longer. Overall, during the third wave of COVID-19 infection, there was an increase of 20 and 30% of pediatric patients. We didn't see like this in the first and second uh, wave, but the third uh, one also in affected from the, the mutations, 20 or 30 persons of uh, more increasing in uh, pediatric patients. Meanwhile, the number of patients who didn't have the clinical symptoms of COVID-19, but had family contact history and therefore gave 19 uh, COVID-19 PCR sample and was found positive increased drastically. And then also uh, in Turkey, there are no studies about COVID-19 vaccine in pediatric patients. We have uh, many uh, studies in the adult uh, patients. And according to United States Center of Disease Control and Prevention reports, there are studies being uh, conducted the vaccination in patients 12 to 16 years old. Now, uh, I am a, a urologist uh, uh, and also in the last five years, I am interested in the chief of the traditional complementary medicine uh, section. So I can only say the, about the uh, pediatric uh, population. This is the view of the from Turkey. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. See, um, Ashwin, when he said 120 uh, pediatric uh, ICU units, and he said zero mortality. Yes. You know, this, this counts. Uh, Jafar, did you hear why I pulled you to Dr. Ahmed? Because uh, it is a public hospital. It's not a private hospital. And we, there is zero mortality. And uh, this, 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 this is one of the uh, amazing things, like what we see when they are saying about it. For example, when you have, like he said, 12 to uh, 16 years, we have the, uh, what can we say? We, we, can, we, we, we are starting to vaccinate or there is research of vaccines. But what about below 12? What about the preteen? That is what Jafar and me are saying, 10, 11, 12. What about the preteen? They are in between, they are crampled. They don't know whether they are kids, they don't know whether they are adults. Now you have the uh, you have the infection coming. So uh, Professor Kadirjan is there. Yesterday we had a recording. Professor Kadirjan, can you just unmute? He's also from Turkey. And then as we were uh, discussing, we were recording his presentation. I said, what could be the first sign, even without the real time PCR, even without that? He said, the immediate sign of any viral infection are the eyes. Immediate. So we had the eyes diagnosis, we had the tongue diagnosis. Immediately, he said the first sign, whether there is fever, any kind of fever, any kind of infection, the eyes are the window to the body. So Professor Kadijan said the eyes, careful examination of the child, the child is rubbing uh, the eyes or something, that itself will give us the first information for any kind of infection. Yeah. So I think Professor Kadijan, can you just uh, share your views? Like how can we help by having a slight diagnosis of the eyes? I, is it possible that we can correlate it for the third wave as a predictive diagnosis? 
in uh, ophthalmology, the uh, the appearance of the eye is very important for uh, detecting some uh, diseases. Uh, really, uh, as for the uh, pandemics, the ophthalmological uh, examination is uh, the first weaving of, of the entrance of any uh, infection to the uh, body. Uh, and this is an, uh, another in entrance for the disease. Okay, but uh, in the conjunctival uh, so solutions and uh, excretions, uh, there are some uh, uh, anti dots and uh, antiseptic uh, excretions of the eye solution. Uh, these solutions can uh, kill the virus, but uh, each in the eyes, uh, getting the dirty uh, hands to the eyes is a very important issue for this infection or the other infections. So, uh, the eye examination is a uh, uh, very important uh, issue for these uh, pandemics uh, examinations. But by means of the lysozyme uh, enzyme in the uh, uh, in the eye solution, especially the conjunctival uh, excretion, uh, can kill the uh, small amounts of the virus. So uh, the ophthalmologic uh, and the eye entrance for the infection is uh, uh, an, is an open door for the infection. It's okay, but uh, because of the uh, defensive. Uh, solutions in the conjunctival excretions uh, is a defense mechanism for the body. Uh, but uh, avoiding to uh, rub the eyes, avoiding to get the dirty hands or uh, clean hands to the eye uh, is an important issue. Uh, so we use, especially in the uh, intensive care units uh, to wear glasses is a very important issue against the uh, spreading the virus. Uh, but uh, thanks God, because of the uh, lysozyme enzyme and the other uh, antiseptic uh, excretions of the conjunctival uh, excretions, uh, the virus uh, cannot enter uh, so widely uh, from the eye door. Yeah, I uh, hope I, I, I hope I could uh, uh, tell my. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, these, like, these are my considerations and uh, my fear of, about the virus. Yeah, because um, as I was talking with some of the pediatricians here and some of the parents here in Germany. We are having the mask till here. When we close, we are closing our mask till here. Yeah. Yes. We are closing the mask till here. But even the eyes are the window for the infection. So that means, it, it, that, does that mean we close the whole face? Was a question everybody were asking. But for the children, they can rub the nose, they can rub the eyes. But the for the children, they more than rubbing the nose, they try to rub the eyes. Just just imagine, as children, we would we try to pull like this and like this. We cannot put the mask. Yes. So now, the only one thing, what was suggested here in Germany, like when I spoke to um, a couple of the parents and the teachers, they said washing of the face, washing of the eyes itself is enough. You know, washing the washing of the eyes and washing of the face for the children. Just when you see the children having a high temperature here, washing of the face is being advised here for for fever, at least wash the face, wash the eyes and the, you know, the face. So even a simple diagnosis, because it takes time to go for a real time PCR, it takes time for this, but till then we cannot keep on waiting. We yes. have to, we cannot keep on waiting. But when you look into the eyes, for example, the fundus around, it's congested. There are the different shapes. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the appearance of the fundus of the eye itself will give which infection it is. So Professor Kadirjan was sharing, like when he looks into the eye, he, he can easily make out whether it is 
a long term infection whether it is a chronic infection whether it is an acute infection whether it is by trauma or whether it is by foreign body or whether it is by viral infection so dr gur you said about this examination of the eye and examination of the tongue you know something like that so is it possible dr gur like we have just looking at the tongue we can say okay this child needs something like this that would be his expertise yes dr gur I think that it can be a general sign. It cannot be a differential diagnosis for anything. No, no, general yeah. sign. General sign for any kid. For example, looking at the tongue for some, you know, the dryness of the tongue is dehydrated, right? Mm -hmm. Simple tips. Yeah, complexion, uh, immediate complexion of the face, uh, out of the ordinary color of the child is a very easy uh, behavior of uh, sudden fatigue. brightness of the eyes over redness of the tongue um sometimes red papular on the tongue and for smaller kids we use the index finger uh often to rub and to see the vein if the vein is start to be more purplish uh, or longer also can uh, indicate some kind of uh, immune disturbance for the kid um that's in general but i think mostly every parents can identify in in his child the uh, the special behavior uh the showing this kind of signs but it's relatively easy to see when they develop but when they develop usually they develop it very fast uh at least here what we seeing now is uh um the symptoms of bone kids about the long covid that many kids that had suffer uh from the covid infection and had recover from light disease after uh, several months uh, we see them uh, in the clinic with extreme fatigue uh, muscle pains headaches uh, some symptoms of autoimmune uh, condition like uh, joint pain after uh, abnormal uh, liver function uh, for some kids we even saw uh, under the age of 18 in ultrasound fatty liver that have been developed light fatty liver after the corona infection and uh, only few uh, cases have been vaccinated under the age uh, of 16 as they were defined for uh, high risk uh, cases other than that it's the same condition people waiting for the uh, approval of the vaccination dr good like for example the children who have recovered from covid now you know like prevention what could what would you suggest for prevention basically the first thing the is to simple keep... ones like take home messages like uh, doc, like mr jafar ashwin all of them are their policies because we can make a document a simple document where we can say what could be the take home message i think when uh, uh, malad actually introduced in the morning the problem of kids staying at home this is the base when the kids going out of their natural rhythm because they are very movable creatures they don't good for them to stay to stay stand so keep the kids moving keep them exercise they have natural ability of high immune unless there are kids in risk and this is something else uh, let them sleep earlier because when they stay home they stay with the screens they go to sleep late they go to sleep late their temperament become cold they get more infected uh, keep them on the right diet I think the best thing is to keep the kids with a very good immune system, a very basic one, because you cannot start giving everyone herbs. Everywhere, it's impossible. And for kids, India really, is a paradise of herbs and vegetables. So don't worry, there's enough of herbs and vegetables in India. Okay, so, so, so for for that thing, I think it's absolutely to add to add to the food uh, of the kids in natural, more uh, fresh seasoning like thyme, basil. Mm -hmm. uh uh that can uh, increase the the um immunity for a viral uh, infection and to use more aromatic uh, herbs that can be given as tea or mixed with other thing like uh salvia officinalis uh, oregano uh, we often use here the oregano oil i mean all kinds of oregano have a very high potential of uh, killing uh, viruses and very simple infusion of buying oregano in the market or plant it in the in the in the pot uh, can be easily be infused in uh, oil usually we use olive oil 
on the sum of uh, 50 gram per uh, uh, even uh, something like half a liter uh, of an oil, put it on the window uh, for uh, to get some light and the kids can be infused or to the nose or under the tongue, few drops per day can be highly effective for every start of infection that only starts. Uh, and usually as the kids become very sick, they become with the right diagnosis uh, better, uh, fast. Um, and I think the main problem is to keep them to keep them moving, uh, which is a big challenge when it's under quarantine or, or you try to keep them in the house. But basically, I think these are these are these are the main thing. Uh, for some, we uh, recommend to do uh, moxibation uh, and to keep warm some of the acupoints uh, uh, on the body, and that can tonify the immune system, like uh, stomach thirty six or colon four, even just to massage the point can stimulate the immune system. Kids are responding very well for uh, acupressure. And it's very easy to guide the parents to do it, uh, to do it as well. That's the basics. You, you are the most luckiest person who sits in between the environment. You can hear the hens cocks from his background. He has animals, he has goats. Yeah, I think I think right we have. Now he, right now he's in Ashdod, and uh, suddenly he calls me and says something is happening. Um, well, I think we have uh, Dr. Shahzad. He can, he can. I, I follow his post every day that he report in uh, Islamabad. What is the condition? I think he can uh, shed some light. What is? Uh, what is the joined? policy? Has he joined, Dr. Gur? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He texted me, Dr. Shahzad. You with us? Can you unmute yourself? Please unmute yourself. So, Dr. Gore, you also see in the third wave in Israel, we have children. Yeah, I can I can hear you, Gore and uh, Amina. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, Dr. Shazad, can you unmute your video? So we have. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Every day he's posting. There, 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 there. You know, Ashwin, what he does, he he he's like a bulletin. You want to see the news from Pakistan? You can go. You can just see being the dean. <laughs> Health Sciences of Karachi is active on Facebook. There, there, there. And he calls me. 1.30 in the night, he calls me and said, I just finished the presentation. I said, 1.30, it's German or Pakistan time. And he, 24 bar 7. Well, uh, so, yeah, actually, oh, we need this. <laughs> one second, one second. Let me mute. Okay. Yes, Dr. Shahzad. Ah, thank you very much, uh, and it's really great to uh, have a connection with you guys uh, and the great work you are doing. I actually sent my presentation. I hope you have seen that. Uh, there was a recorded Dr. presentation. Shazad, now we're just having, just a second, now we're just having a panel discussion because India and Pakistan okay. are so different. India and okay. Pakistan are absolutely no different. We have the same <laughs> Ghana. What we yeah. say, is food, pina is the drinks, and Ghana drinks is not the drinks of others. We have our own uh, yogurt. Iran also we have in Pakistan and India, and Ghana is the same Bollywood and uh, songs and other things. Yeah, 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 exactly. You are right. So what we have done is uh, in COVID, uh, there was a big issue uh, in the first wave when we had a lot of, lot of cases, but most of the time, in the first wave, it was the elderly which were affected. So we touched the figure of around 6,000, 7,000 per day in the first wave, which, which, which actually uh, started on the 26th of February last year. So the first case in Pakistan was in 26 February, 2020. Later on, it kept on increasing gradually. So February, February, March was pretty stable, but it started increasing in April, May and June. It touched the peak in June, July. And uh, we touched the cases of around 7,000, 6,500, 6,000 per day. Uh, the deaths were also 150 per day. Uh, the, uh, the investigation and the testing capacity was less. We were only doing 20,000, 30,000 tests, but later on increased. We had a second wave uh, in, uh, in, in winters. So second wave was also short-lived. Uh, it didn't go much uh, uh, scarier. Uh, it, almost stopped in January, January 2021. And then we thought we are stable. So we opened up a lot of things. So we opened educational institutions, we opened universities thinking that, and you know, nobody is expert in COVID. If you say in this world, even, uh, in, even Fauci, Fauci is struggling with a lot of things he said. And now again, uh, there are many things which are going on internationally. 
uh, you cannot predict this virus and the, the way it has taken us it actually has uh, created a lot of uh, uh, holes in the public health epidemiology and public health uh, understanding in the third wave uh, it suddenly started picking up it wasn't at that time it wasn't the incidence of india uh, that uh, you have that uh, the kumbh mela so before kumbh mela we had a sp spike the cases were more than india per day the deaths were higher and then suddenly and nobody was taking care in pakistan you know no one was afraid of the third wave they said it's only two waves which which can occur there will not be any third wave so everybody was casual the universities were open we opened the classes face to face interviews meeting i started traveling karachi lahore islamabad physical meetings no sops nothing we thought it is over and the vaccination is here so i got oh. vaccinated others got vaccinated as well then suddenly the news started coming from india and we were told that the cases are 300000 350000 and 4000 deaths per day everybody became fearful the, the ministry and everybody they started uh, having a lot of discussion so we closed a lot of things again um, it it peaked up to the you know we have a eid every year this festivity it has also you know turkey is also having this activity in all the muslim countries we celebrate this uh, eid ul fitr so in the eid days we had a lot of crowds and the cases were increased now because um, the, the 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 eid surge has gone down so now we are having around uh, say 3000 cases per day around 150 to 100 deaths per day and uh, we are having a positivity a uh, test positivity of around uh, say 6% to 9% varying between 6% to 9% today is 6% so uh, we we hope that it is going down the, the, when talking about children the first wave had very little effect on children in pakistan so there were not much children we we although uh, tested uh, some of the children as well it was negative so many of the children even their parents were positive they, 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 the children didn't get any symptom in second wave also uh, the children were not significant number but in third wave a huge number of children got infected for the last 3 4 months we have witnessed a huge number of children so if total uh, sort of you can say if total new cases were 100000 to 7000 were uh, children which was not the case in the first and second wave i don't know what happened maybe the virulence or the infectivity of the virus has something to do or the immunity of the children but in the third wave children were more and among the dead also there were some fatalities also in the in the, in the children uh, cases so we have fatality uh, from less than 1 less than 20 less than 30 gradually increasing the more fatality the highest fatality in pakistan is the more fatal uh, age groups are between 50 to 60 and then second highest is 60 to 70 and then it decreases again because the number is less in 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 elderly we have a very life expectancy of not more than 65 66 years so i'm now over to you thank you dr ishazad see ashwin that is what was alarming me the third wave he says again to the children why nobody has a question and he is he is a graduate from uk and that is how he compares so what we said is He suddenly says one line: "Desi to desi hai, whether Indians or Pakistan." You know, like now we are getting the third wave. Now, what is with the third wave? Is my question, Dr. Sunil. What do you say? You're right there in the middle in Bangalore. Okay. Uh, thank you for for uh, getting me into the conference. The most important thing, as as I was hearing everybody, that uh, the third wave is going to hit the children and all those things. and uh, there is a particular pattern which we saw uh, during the first wave and the second wave uh, the first wave as, as rightly pointed out it hit mo most of the elderly population the second wave is uh, i mean between uh, we are seeing the younger age group from 25 to 40 as ashwin mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, dr jafar rightly pointed out it uh, hit the 25 40 years of age and uh, uh, and some few and few uh, children now there is a, there, there are few reports and uh, reported articles which are published in cdc as well as this thing why this children are not affected as much as the uh, the adults this is what is the 
because they say that the ace uh, receptors in children are much less compared to the adults and uh, the spike protein of the virus is much more uh, um, uh, attachable to the ace receptor when it enters the cell so what they are saying is the children has got less number of ace receptors that is why the viral uh, replication in the children is much less and that is why the complication in the children is much, much less that is the uh, what is the what what we have what what is been uh, reported in many of the journals which we which i have gone through but saying that but saying that this virus is really tricky so very frank with uh, uh, dr ashwin dr jafar dr gur and uh, the other experts who had already spoken this virus is very tricky it has mutated and uh, instead of uh, i mean uh, we being ahead of the virus and uh, i mean preventing the viral spread the virus is ahead of us and we are running behind the virus this is what is basically happening we are trying to pick the vaccines we are trying to do all kinds of stuff and the virus is mutating and there are a lot of mutations which has already happened and they i mean uh, to the dismay of the many uh, i mean virologists uh, the 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 mutations are happening i mean continuously which which is a known case in case of rna virus rna virus mutates very fast this is known fact and uh, this mutation is really uh, uh, affecting the we don't know there are not much studies which are uh, come out to say that uh, the mutation has affected the vaccinated population so we don't have any kind of such kind of a data uh, still the data now whatever we have we know that the vaccines are still active on the mutated uh, uh, virus and the antibodies are still uh, the neutralizing antibodies which are produced after vaccination are still preventing the infection in the uh, in the vaccinated population even if there is a single dose vaccination so that's a good policy which we have seen in case of uk and uh, i mean us and other population even a single dose of vaccine is really effective in preventing serious infections i'm not talking about mild infections i'm talking about a serious infection now the whole uh, whole question is uh, how to manage this kind of uh, sudden rise of pe uh, peaking in the second wave now the most problematic thing is it's just not the number of cases which is coming into the thing do we really have the infrastructure to manage the number of uh, people who are infected right let it be mild uh, mild can be managed at home the moderate and the severe condition which require hospitalization as such do we really have the infrastructure the answer lies between what is what uh, dr ashwin and dr jafar rightly said is in between is in between it may be yes or it may be no in case of urban urban areas where the infrastructure is there the answer might be yes to some extent not fully again i am saying not fully to some extent yes we can manage the cases in the uh, in the urban areas but the real problem is in the rural areas where there is no medical infrastructure there and probably as the virus is spreading now to the rural areas because of the migration of the people from the urban areas to the rural areas right because of uh, shutdown and all those things that is a real challenge which you face now now probably is the real challenge where the number of cases which are rising up in the villages or the rural areas that might be a real challenge for all the i mean i mean the indian population as such might be a real challenge uh, how to manage the cases in the rural setup where there is no medical i mean not much i'm not saying there is no there is not much of medical infrastructure uh, lying out there now and then on top of that there are various protocols which are coming uh, Ash dr ashwin or dr jafar you can correct me that there are various protocols popping up every day the who one day says that remdesivir is not effective on one day they say it is effective on one day they say plasma therapy is effective on the other day they say plasma therapy is not effective i mean there are various contraindications because nobody knows much about this virus to be very frank with all i mean to be frank with everybody i mean let let there be an expert virologist or whatever it is we have seen that no i mean uh, this virus is such a conundrum or such a uh, i mean such a mimic that it can escape all the expectations 
uh, of, of, of of all the great virologists out here and it, it's really a, i mean it's really a challenge to treat this because on one time because the protocol goes on changing that's one thing the doctors who are on the ground who are treating these patients they have their own set of uh, guidelines to treat i mean please correct me if i'm wrong they have a own set of guidelines because on their experience they are seeing okay this is working and they they will use this medicine but on, suddenly somebody comes from who or some something and they say this is not working so this is really a conundrum for all the people who are working on the ground so there is a no definite guidelines to be very to be very frank there is no definite guideline to say that okay this is the protocol this will work perfectly with the this kind of population now this would be a real challenge this would be a real challenge in the rural areas where we don't have a proper medical uh, infrastructure that is one thing and third third wave which everybody is predicting now third wave which everybody is predicting now can i just take a, uh, a phone call because vincenzo is calling i think he I wants to join the call yeah. Just yeah. Can ask I just, yeah, Dilek, can just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just, just ask him to join, Doctor yeah, Dilek. I, can you unmute yourself, Doctor Doctor Dilek is from Germany, and uh, we are speaking about infrastructure. We are speaking about handling the children. We are uh, speaking about uh, so many things. Okay, Doctor Dilek and me, we both know in Germany, if a child is sick, the child is not hospitalized. the child is taken care at home right dr dilik yes <laughs> see they don't run to the hospital when the child is sick they take care of the child at home so you we see the third wave now also affecting the children in germany what do you have to say how just share your experience how they monitor the children at home rather than taking them to the hospital because this would be a good message for india rather than to run to the hospital if a country like germany is promoting taking care of the child at home yes dr dilek can you just share an experience how a child is taken care at home it is wait see uh, dr dilek like now in in germany when somebody is a covid positive we are not allowed in the shop nobody without a covid negative you cannot so you don't see children normally whether it is pandemic or non pandemic when a child is sick there is a sick leave both for the child and for the teacher so they they don't advise for hospitalization only very very severe cases even for the normal people they are supposed to go to the hospital rest everyone is at home ashwin can you just imagine about this a country like germany if there is a covid positive they are not running they are not they are not going one two or three even a normal flu infection during may everybody had pollen infection most of them will have pollen infection most of them will have uh, uh, hay fever most of them will have a kind of uh, what do you say uh, a, a kind of an influenza but nobody is running even nobody is running for vaccination they are slow they are calm they are say okay when it comes when it comes and they are taking care at home so now my 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 question like uh, yeah she, she is uh, best in german so better she can speak in german uh, sorry dr <laughs> slowly okay. my answer on it so we had a discussion here like dr dilik and me in our uh, slow uh, english here i had a friend uh, sifa are you there she is a turkish staying in belgium when her sister's children got infected they were covid positive they were at home there was no medication given for 7 days only teas warm isolation washing of the face regularly washing of washing of the face regularly tip sponging because the temperature was not there so there was no kalpal there is no paracetamol there i don't know why in india a little bit of raised temperature kalpal paracetamol antibiotic steroids steroid was i, I don't think so anybody here in germany were given steroids oops okay let us see who is this so the uh, main takeaway like 
if we can make modern for india how to take care of the children at home like we are speaking that dr sunil is like worried what will happen in the villages what i think in the villages they will do better like dr gur and me discuss village is has a space you have space you have ground you can move movement in india in 10 by 10 where will the child move in 10 by 10 there are 10 people now it's a lockdown everybody is there you, you know so i was like on a whatsapp video call and this person recovered comes home yeah my test is negative and hugging the children still he the, he's carrying ashwin as you are there with the policy makers and others if we can send a message just see yes you can hug your children at least maintain that it's not the social distance it's a physical distance at home so Prabhupada, how what is yes. the what is what do you suggest from the context of once again now we have vincent sir joining us vincent sir hello hi i am so sorry to be a little bit late but you are very just just i would like to keep this opportunity to yes. say really the welcome to all participant and to stress the importance that we give to the children always because if we are capable to treat the children we have the good adult society tomorrow it's important it's extremely important and we need to focus all efforts in children health today with the prevention and the way the really the campaign for the major illness in some countries we have the high rate of the mortality for the pediatric population and this is not good because we have the person sick tomorrow we need to take care of children today and insist in this concept is fundamental for me this idea to keep today healthy children society if we want to have the healthy society tomorrow if we are capable to have the campaign of immunization to prevent the major illness and so on we have more and more healthy population tomorrow adults and elderly vincent so we had till now the panel discussion dr ahmed is here dr ahmed vincent yeah. so is here dr ahmed shared they were 120 uh, pediatric beds in his hospital and they did not have even one mortality you know that that is the strength of them to take care of the children because the children are regarded as a future of that country exactly this is the reason i insist the idea we need to make the maximum of the efforts in order to have the good pediatric service is not only the people hospitalized this is a part of the population we need to make the campaign of the prevention we need to make the campaign for the food we need to make the campaign for the really the social favorable environment for the children yeah uh, vincent so like now um, everybody like pointers we had from pakistan we had from turkey we had from um, other countries also here the pointers for the third wave are moving towards the children so india like we have dr jafar here who is heading a huge unit and we have dr ashwin here they both are heading the two big units in india now uh, the question is still most of them think the third wave is for the children you are also seeing the third wave for the is most affecting the children the children i repeat we need to have this global vision of the children health uh, and all stage since the born until they comes adults this is very important it's not only the health organization but it need the social organization yeah uh, jafar you have any question uh, you have vincent so here you had a question which you were starting na you can ask ashwin or jafar somebody was asking before vincent so started sorry no no i was asking uh, simply what uh, so if if the care has to be done from home then what are the specific actions that need to be taken for that if that has to be made part of the uh, treatment protocol or something 
no care of children at home especially yes, consider- right. we have designed a protocol here in under european medical association for the european countries there is a design protocol for example you have a template in germany like if somebody a child is covid infected what are the precautions what is the diet what is this there is a defined so everybody has it the moment they get a covid uh, positive uh, report so this template goes to the um, how a mother or thing and how what is the breastfeeding what is happening how do you calculate it's not suddenly putting the oximeter here and what is the amount of steroids what is the amount of this absolutely the last chance the last choice will be the medications you are right this is the reason amina is yeah. very important to consider the where is the children Uh, is the environment one children in hamburg is completely different from the children unfortunately in india yeah yeah because the food is different the uh, external environment is different the water is different the food is different this is important is to draw the attention of the children world and this is very important for us to discuss about this and the ma is ready to support all the initiative in this way thank you dr vincent okay. so today, vincent, today the whole day we are having different different presentations okay. where every presentation we are focusing on the preventive health care for covid yeah, and exactly yeah. but to consider what is start, important we need to have a panel discussion ashwin we can take ashwin and jafar we can take it from here we can develop a module we have enough of experts who are on the field right yeah. if we dr ahmed's team entirely from turkey when you know children are the one uh, who cannot speak you know elders they can say okay uh, i'm having pain i'm having chest pain but what would we do for 5 years 6 years because they cannot speak exactly this is the reason we need to forget, consider forget the environment yeah forget about the infection they cannot speak the congestion in the mind they cannot speak the bombardment they are seeing their elders passing away they are seeing their neighbors passing they don't know death my alarm was for to bring a panel discussion here was the children did not know the meaning of death before the pandemic came okay yeah. try to do something and at the end we try to publish the the statement of this meeting okay yes uh, vincent so what we can do is here uh, tahir you are from malaysia before we wrap up uh, i mean we just try to uh, wrap up can you just share what in malaysia right now are you handling it because malaysia is going up very beautifully for children absolutely preventive health care i spoke to dr coaching soon who is a director and she said absolutely they are they are trying the best the children not get infected first thing Yes, Dr. Tahir. Yeah, actually, uh, you so initially the children will not affected, but of late, if you can see, there are certain clusters which have originated from the school itself. So we don't say that the children are not infected. Uh, Malaysia is having at the moment is like we are having a quite a big surge at the moment for the last three to four days, where six thousand and more than six thousand cases have been reported. and uh, the bad part is there are certain clusters which have actually originated from the school itself so we don't say you know saying that the third wave will affect children or the third wave will carry a lot of children so that is a false statement to me because it has already started okay so we need to be alarmed that children have already started being infected with this virus the wild uh, variant which was not so good infecting the children but the mutant variant so far the indian i mean uh, the variant which is circulating in india is has not been reported so high in malaysia but still we have cases among children uh, of 400 almost 500000 cases in malaysia there are more than 60000 children who have been infected so far the school children what's so the mortality is, tahir no the mortality is very minimal and only those children who have some kind of issues health issues have passed away but overall the mortality has been how well many do you think were hospitalized uh no the the the, the thing is in, in malaysia what exactly they are doing is anybody who is infected should be 
transferred to the hospital so that the chain can be broken. So that was exactly the part what Malaysia was doing and they, they were too good with that. They have, they have actually uh, made some makeshift hospitals so that most of the patients, instead of in the community, they live in the hospitals. But of late, because for the past two weeks, the cases have been on rise, probably, uh, we don't know exactly, probably because of some variant happening, or maybe because people were a bit careless, but I don't say careless because we are, we are protecting ourselves with double mask nowadays, and people are taking care of themselves, but still, you know, uh, the virus is in the community at the moment. Okay, so, Amina, let yeah, me see Vincent. something. If we are absolutely interested to have the report of this meeting today, Perfect. and for the children, it's important to have the school, the family, the society, and of course, the states. This is so the, the point, the fundamental the point. And when we talk about the children, we need to consider the food, water, and environment. Okay, I wish really the Thank great you. meeting to everybody, thank you very much, and let me know the report. I'm coming thank back you. to you in one hour. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, Amin, are you there? Because when Tahir, you told me the whole school was infected. You know, Ashwin, the entire school was infected. The entire no, the, was not the whole school was infected, but few clusters have been originated from the schools. So yeah. I mean, now yeah. So now I mean, not the clusters are not so big. Because the good point is what exactly Malaysia is practicing is the moment there is some positive patients, they are segregating the patient from the community, taking them to an isolation center. So that isolation center is, main, is, is managed by the hospital itself. So this is what exactly happening is just in terms so that the infection, the, the chain of the infection is broken. But to say that uh, children are not so far not being infected is wrong. The children have started getting infected. So, so the third wave is exposing the children getting infected. Yeah, I, I hope that will be much more bigger what exactly we are seeing it now at the moment. So, uh, yeah, and if, if you can see- scared, uh, Ashwin and Jafar, see everybody is scared to say, well, it will be much more bigger like what we are seeing now with the children, but <laughs> no. So uh, let us start building up the uh, preventive modules. And that could be the uh, take home message from this discussion. So thank you, Ashwin. Thank you, Jafar. Thank you, Dr. Sunil, Tahir, all of us. So we continue with our conference after I this. Just have a, uh, I mean, I just have one request yeah. to Dr. Gur. Hmm. He was, in fact, uh, giving a lot of actionable points, yeah. like uh, what we should do, and especially on the uh, what do you say, the diet side, what are the kind of uh, uh, things that could be given. So if he could just uh, jot down these points and uh, send it across, it will be uh, quite helpful. Yeah, absolutely. You perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. I give you a perfect, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner options also for the children. I uh, the whole I day of the conference, the whole day of the conference, we have different, different aspects here. We have music therapy, we have counseling, we have the whole day, we have about 15, 20. So I will forward you all the presentations or I can uh, catch you on Saturday or Sunday, share your laptop, copy the whole folder and paste it on your laptop. So I can give it to you and I should- uh, Because the way he was uh, describing, it appeared that he was describing on both on preventive in the sense uh, those children who are not yet infected and at the same time, you were discussing about uh, the dietary plan for those children who are infected also. Yeah, and one I, final, I think that, yeah, one final I think, point I would, uh, I, when, while uh, hearing him speaking, especially Dr. Gur, when hear, uh, hearing him speaking, talking about making children sleep early, all those things are becoming a little difficult now because of lockdown, we are going more into online education. So about two years ago, I have disconnected my internet at home so that children are not exposed so much. Same person today is giving a laptop, a mobile to the children and asking them to log on to that and use it. And this is actually taking a toll on their uh, nightlife in the sense uh, sleeping early, sleep, sorry, sleeping late. So these are going to be some behavioral uh, cha challenges on behavioral changes with children. And we will definitely will have to work with them and educating parents to do some sort of home checkup on a regularly basis and look for various danger signs in children is another thing uh, which maybe some sort of a protocol could be written on that. 
thank you Therefore, can you give us two days monday we will be with the document and uh, ashwin you can arrange a press conference for india so i will have only 10 like dr gur and vincent so and all of us with actionable points i'm going to put actionable points for covid pediatric isolation sure sure let's do that Thank so you. we can have a press note and we can prepare a document which can be circulated all around the newspapers in different languages, actionable points, what they can do. Like Dr. Guru was saying, Organon, where, where will we start searching Organon? We get it only in the Pizza Hut in India, right? So let me check out what is available right now there. We can ask coriander instead of parsley. We can ask mint. We can ask uh, methi, kasturi methi, fenugreek instead of Organon. So let me try to prepare a document with uh, Dr. Gur and other experts here uh, together. And let us have an another press meet or something on Monday or Tuesday with actionable, uh, let us put it as an actionable uh, take home or actionable COVID helpline for pediatrics or home on home isolation. So probably that would be uh, good. So the, let us combine all together. And of course, the, the conference will still go on and we have our presentations now. Yeah. And thank you Professor, so much. Professor and, Amina, a small, yeah. a, Professor, a small point that my colleague uh, Oni, she could not connect to the sound, but she texted me. And it's yeah. very true. It's about vitamin D. Because yeah. many, of, many of the kids that are having an acid diet, they are how to absorb the vitamin D, even if they go to the sun. And we absolutely can connect the low vitamin D to low immune resistance. So exactly. boosting, vi boosting vitamin D, uh, which they cannot get only or solely from uh, sun because of the diet, is also crucial for uh, decreasing the intensity of the disease uh, and can help with the uh, better healing. Uh, and, it's not, and it's not toxic because most of the kids that we are checking, at least here in Israel, are deficient. Yeah. Even in India, because of lockdown, they are not going out. Where is the sun? Even if they go out, yes, their, diet, go their, diet is, their diet is so acid that they cannot absorb it. Even if they meet, eat meat a few times a week, they still lack of B12. This exactly. is a problem of, of acidity from young, young age. This is, this is a problem of absorption of the food. Yeah. See, we are eating rich food in the sense is not spices, biryani or halib. It's not that, that is not the rich food. The rich food is which absorbs into the body. Allow the food to absorb into the body, mm -hmm. right? So how do you have the food absorption into the body? That is more important, yeah? So um, that, yes, that, Dr. Gurdjie. Yes, Dr. Just, Sumit. Just a small uh, thing about the food is the food should be simple it should be digestible and absorbable. Also and excretable. Should, and excretable. So what, what I, it, it should contain all the uh, minerals, vitamins, and all those things in such a way that it, it, it will not only boost up the immunity of the child, also it will keep the child in a healthy condition. And as uh, Dr. Jaffer Sop right, rightly said, that uh, because of the internet and because of the online program, the children are not getting enough of sleep because they are sleeping late. Probably that is also affecting a little bit on the ch ch children's health. That is one thing. Second thing is isolation of the children who are already infected. So if you want to isolate the child who is already infected, that's another big headache because the children will not leave their parents. And then there is a, there is a difficulty of handling the child Right? So that's one thing which I, I don't know, the, Dr. Tahir, if, if, if he can, at the end of the day, tell us what, what how exactly they manage this. Because this is the most important thing. When we want to isolate the child, because they raise the question of isolation of the child, you cannot isolate the child without the parents. Because the child would be uh, uncontrollable if the parents are not there with them. And that's a bigger issue which we have to face. And when the child uh, number gets in, in, in infected number goes up and then you have to uh, accommodate the parents also along with the child for isolation, then it becomes that much more difficult for the authorities to handle both of them, the parents as well as the child. So it is a dynamic kind of a situation which is evolving probably uh, over the period of time when we have a discussion on this conference, would come out with a dynamic plan as to how to manage this kind of a 
I think both uh, Dr. Ashwin as well as Dr. Jafar would 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 probably as well as Dr. Professor Aminat, Professor Aminat as well as Dr. Gur uh, and Dr. Tahir and uh, Dr. Ahmed would shed some light as to how to take this forward, right? Because we should have, as Dr. Jafar rightly said, it is just not whether they are infected or not infected. How to manage these people who are infected? Right, whether it is mild, moderate, or severe, that is a different kind of how to manage these uh, children in a proper way. Because uh, we don't want a child who is infected and whose lung uh, disability is so much that is not compatible with the life in the at the adult stage. Right, so that is what we we don't want such kind of a comorbid kind of a problems happening. So we would would like to have a dynamic kind of a uh, plan where where there will be less kind of a morbidity as well as mortality so yes the experts would uh, do that thank you so much i think uh, we got the home message so we got some homework from jafar and ashwin especially from jafar jafar next time i will not call you for panel discussion you'll give me homework i will connect with all of them that's what we are supposed to do yeah <laughs> What what Jafar? I'm that supposed what, to do homework. That is what we are supposed to do at the higher level to make others do some homework. Yeah, and, uh, we are living and, and outside don't, India, but you make forget. us do the work for the home country, which is homework. <laughs> and don't forget that I was heading education department, school education uh, for four years. You were. He was he was a commissioner of the thing, and we did we did a lovely workshop. We did live activities. and uh, jafar seriously we have to do it back again let the pandemic be over i wanted yes. to present those activities today in the conference but that one hour is taken up by this panel discussion now jafar is saying that would be good amina you would have done that exercises here with others so thank you you know thank, thank you jafar uh, anything else uh, jafar and ashwin before we wrap up and we start the presentation dr dilik's presentation is next <laughs> dr dilik uh, we make you the yeah. we make you the co-host and uh, can you make the presentation from your laptop yes okay mm -hmm. so we make you the co-host and we can have your